Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, my name is Paul Fletcher. I'm the CEO for Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. And we are here this morning to introduce or, or kick off the uh, workforce uh, strategic plan that we've been working on here for quite some time. Um, we're, we have rolled out our regional workforce plan. We did that back on March 31st. And today we're here to roll out our plan specifically for Williamson County. So when we began this planning effort, we, we did a, an overall regional workforce plan, and then we did a specific workforce plan for each of the nine counties um, in which we, which we operate. Um, so today we're here to talk about the Williamson County plan. Um, and before we get into the, the whys and some of our goals, um, I'd like to introduce our workforce board chair, uh, Frank Leonardis. Frank, would you like to say a few words? Sure, thanks, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, on behalf of the board, we certainly uh, would like to thank you all for your participation in helping to develop this plan. Um, uh, board staff has worked with many of you in the community um, to help develop this plan. We couldn't do this without your input. So thank you for your participation in the development of it and look forward to um, working with everybody as we roll out this plan and execute on it over the next um, roughly three years. So thank you very much and appreciate your time today. Thank you, Frank. So as we, um, as we begin to talk about um, why we developed the workforce plan um, and, and, and some of the goals and things we, we talked about needing to do, um, we, we felt a plan was, was needed to really document the needs of the business community, of the employers, the resources that were available um, in the community and the skills of the workforce that we currently had, and then where we have gaps between the skills of the workforce and what the business community needs, we need to try to figure out how we use the resources we have to mitigate those gaps. Um, so we, we, our plan goals were, we, we set pretty th three pretty ambitious goals um, for Williamson County. One of those is to look at some big structural barriers um, and, and really look at how those impact workforce, um, things like housing, childcare, transportation, and broadband. Um, second, we want to enhance the employer-led and demand-driven workforce system. And third, we want to look at creating stronger pathways to self-sufficient employment and career advancement. So, so some background around the plan. So we started um, in the summer of 2020. We did a, uh, we held a, a, a workshop. Um, it was specifically focused um, on Williamson County and talking to folks from the community to really, to really kind of hear from them what their needs were, where they saw the resource gaps being, and then how we could go about trying to uh, work, work on ways to address those gaps. And then I'm gonna um, introduce our Chief Operations Officer, Diane Tackett, and Diane's gonna talk some more about things we discovered as we went through the, the planning process. Thanks, Paul. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Diane Tackett, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer um, here with Workforce Solutions. I'm actually splitting my screen, so as we go through the, the key findings, you may find that I glance away a little bit um, to make sure that I address all of the findings. Um, so after we convened the uh, stakeholder groups and did a little bit more background information, we identified um, several key findings that helped to inform the plan that, that we're putting into place for Williamson County. One of the things we realized is that there were some rapidly rising housing costs in the county combined with a lack of public transportation in our more rural portions of the county. Um, and combined with those things, there's a shortage of workers with the right technical skills. Um, and each of these things was identified as a significant workforce issue. Um, additionally, we saw that there was a low poverty rate and extremely high educational attainment in Williamson County which equated to high labor force participation. And that was really one of the strengths that the county has. Um, there are multiple communities in the county that have active workforce initiatives through economic development councils, chambers of commerce, and uh, other organizations. And this is an opportunity to foster more connection and collaboration between our initiatives to scale up this important work and further strengthen, strengthen the talent pipeline countywide. Once we identified um, kind of those key areas as findings, we worked to develop some priorities that we would like to work on in Williamson County. 
So our priorities are to support the launch of the Workforce Matters Coalition to help address structural barriers across the region. Um, and we really would like to focus on housing, transportation, childcare, and broadband. We would like to strengthen and align the partnerships with the Chambers of Commerce and different economic development councils um, to engage employers more meaningfully and in a more, in a more combined manner um, in the workforce system and improve the understanding of the, label, the local labor market, try to say that three times fast, um, across the whole county. And then our third priority is to increase the awareness of the high demand careers and the opportunities to connect with Williamson County employers to ensure the educational programs in the region are training for the, the skills that the employers need. Yeah, let's, let's go about five. I don't think it would be too bad or anything. <clears throat> Once we identified um, those those key findings and priorities, we really kind of put this into a SWOT analysis that helped us determine where our threats and where our weaknesses could be that, that we could work on. We'd like to build off the strengths that are currently in place in terms of the low unemployment rate and the quick labor force recovery after the initial pandemic shutdown. Um, we already identified that there was a high labor force participation rate and Williamson County actually has the highest median hourly wage of all of the counties in our, in our nine county area, combined with a very low poverty rate and that high educational attainment, as well as all the active workforce initiatives that are currently going on. So that's a lot of strengths that we can build off of, um, but we do really wanna make sure that we're taking into consideration the opportunity to reskill and redeploy the unemployed workers who are in the county uh, to meet the needs that, that our employers have. Um, and we'd really like to spend some time coordinating with school districts to raise awareness about the careers in the county and ensure that CTE coursework and uh, other initiatives are aligned with the needs of the business community. We're gonna scale up successful workforce initiatives through greater coordination between the organizations that we discussed. And then we're also looking to continue to expand not just virtual career fairs, but our virtual presence in providing services to all the residents of Williamson County. Um, not just due to the COVID pandemic, but, but for a while we realized that childcare business um, has been under stress. The COVID pandemic really kind of um, aggravated the, the margins and the stress level that, that those businesses were feeling. Um, and that's something that we, we need to work to prop up. We also identified the lack of public transportation as a weakness. And in some areas, the lack of coordination between communities and school districts on different workforce initiatives. Um, as residents of Williamson County, we may realize that the cost of housing is rising quickly, and that does put an additional burden on the, the workers in the county to be able to maintain their, their residence and work in the county in which they live. So that's considered a weakness and something that we would like to address. Um, the shortage of workers with the right technical and soft skills. So that kind of speaks to ensuring that the right training and the right opportunities are aligned with the needs of the business community. Um, and then the shortage of affordable quality, high quality childcare to support families to be able to enter into and main, maintain the workforce. Uh, and, and again, we realize that that is a threat to the overall health of the workforce development in Williamson County is the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on small business communities, including childcare and other early care and education settings. And then although we do have the highest median hourly wage of all the RCA counties, we do not have enough jobs in Williamson County that currently pay a wage that's going to be sustainable for families. Um, so that's really some of the, the, the strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats that, that we've identified. Um, and to talk a little bit more specifically about the county plan, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Dr. Kara Matina Ryan, who is our chief strategy officer here. Hi, everyone. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how we plan to implement this. And so our first goal is to collaborate on solutions for structural barriers. And we've talked about a lot of these large scale issues that impact our communities, including um, workforce housing, transportation, broadband, childcare. This also includes making sure training and education are available to our residents, 
and also supporting entrepreneurship and figuring out how we can create a great ecosystem around those issues. Um, our, how we plan on going about that is really engaging all of our partners. And that includes coordinating with Healthy Williamson County, the Eastern Williamson County Collaborative, um, the Williamson County Community Resource Center and opportunities for Williamson and Burnett counties. And we wanna help um, engage all of our volunteer bases around this while also strengthening our relationships with all of our chambers, um, EDCs, uh, and other organizations that really help us build out those relationships with our business partners. Um, and that is part of goal two, where we enhance the region's employer-led and demand-driven workforce system, because of course that's important to us as well. Um, and goal three, of course, is to create pathways to self-sufficient employment and career advancement. And the reason we're going about it in that way is to really help us, one, understand that we all need to collaborate, two, that we need to be doing this in the demand-driven sense of thinking of our employers, and then also thinking about it from how can we make that job seeker successful. And so under goal two, we have help connect community-based workforce initiatives in Williamson County to identify opportunities for knowledge sharing, collaboration, and scaling up. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're including all of these workforce development committees in these discussions that are all that are scattered throughout um, Williamson County and also our industry associations like the Georgetown Manufacturers Alliance. Um, we wanna make sure that we're including these messages and information in the work that we're doing. Um, we wanna make sure that we're engaging our manufacturers a great deal more because we know that they are a great opportunity for creating um, and sustaining family sustaining wages within our community. Um, and we want to see greater pipelines and celebrate that across the county. Um, we also want to work better at supporting our technology employers. Uh, Williamson County and our regional area has the greater footprint for our technology and IT professions. And we wanna make sure that we're, we're working towards that and coordinating an effort to supply the right talent. Um, we do wanna also work with you to create a workforce profile and make presentations available um, about the labor market conditions and data and make that more accessible to all of our partners and our businesses to make sure we're all on the same page about how we can improve our effort. Um, we also wanna work with you guys to make sure that our career lattice system um, in Williamson County reflects the opportunities in the region and is useful as much to our job seekers as it is to our businesses. Um, and a raise awareness for opportunities for Williamson County employers to participate in industry partnerships, advisory roles for CTE programs. We essentially, we wanna be great partners to all of our community members in Williamson County. And then under goal three, we want to create pathways to self-sufficient employment and career advancement. And what that means really is that we really wanna help our job seekers with extra support and make sure that they feel successful in their career trajectory. So that includes us really starting from the ground up in all of our efforts. So we really want to build out our partnerships with our ISDs because we know our, our students are, are going to be getting a lot of their information about and making choices based on information that they get while they're in school. Um, so partnering with our school districts is incredibly important and making sure that our school districts have the data and information they need from local employers to make great decisions. And so we can be great partners in helping them build, building out that information for students. Um, we also, of course, wanna work with our chambers and EDOs to plan and execute career awareness days, um, activities and events, and just really expanding on other initiatives that would help promote and create awareness around um, education or workforce opportunities and education opportunities that lead to great workforce outcomes for those students. Of course, we, we are fortunate that Williamson County has a great array of um, higher education partners. And we want to work with, with all of our employers and our job seekers and our education partners to ensure that we're, we're creating career pathways. Um, 
And of course, we also want to be partners in with our EDOs to support attracting those higher wage industries to the county and creating those higher wage opportunities, especially in our more rural areas, so that we're creating a great opportunity for those, because we did point out in our threats earlier that there wasn't, there was a lower amount of high wage um, family sustaining careers available in Williamson County. We wanna be a part of the effort to improve that. Um, and then I believe, uh, so Diane or Eugene will be talking about some of the data that we used to, to make these kinds of calls about how we would move forward. I think it's going to be me. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Eugene Ratliff. I'm at the board office. Work very closely with Diane and Kara, Paul, Ever, the whole team. Uh, I look at data information, uh, labor market information, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go over this. I do apologize up front. I have a tendency of speaking very fast. Uh, if I do, just slow me down and tell me to repeat myself. Um, and so this is the information we did look at. Um, I will let you know is what you're going to be seeing is as of August 2020, and that's the time frame that we were working on this strategic plan. Most all of this information is very fluid, so it changes quarterly, monthly. Um, some of it is, is pretty static, but a lot of it is very fluid. So at, this is pretty much showing the, uh, the labor force of August 2020. Um, I checked this morning just to see, and uh, the labor force actually is right about the same um, as, of, as of right now, as it was in August 2020. Um, and so it, it, it fluctuates all the time. Go ahead to the next slide, please. This is something that's very interesting. It's the change in labor force. And this really shows the, fluid, the fluidity, I can't say that word, um, of how, how this works. This actually shows a growth in the labor force for Williamson County of about half a percentage for the month of August. And we're sitting here going, wait a minute, that was COVID. What's interesting, if you look at September 2020, which we, we didn't do, there was a drop of about 1%. Uh, and so, and let's think about that, La uh, Labor Day uh, happened in September, labor force dropped. Um, so this is, like I said, very fluid. So we're showing you what we utilized pretty much so to help us determine what was going on at that time. Um, and once again, also, I did not say all of this information, um, anybody ever want to request it, we can give you current information that we have. Um, so just let us know and we'll get it to you. Unemployment, August 2020, Williamson County, we had 16,000 people unemployed. Um, once again, September, it dropped again. Uh, we're back up to about where we were. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're okay. We did uh, unemployment, I think, went, uh, it stayed a little bit, maybe a little bit higher. Um, last month, I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, the unemployment rate, 5.1%. I did glance a while ago, and I think it was showing 5.1% for March. Some of those numbers do come back and change after they do some adjustments. So uh, even for what it was in August, we're about the same. Uh, labor participation. Uh, this is just having the participation rate in 69.2%. Um, You'll notice, of course, Williamson County has, has the highest labor participation report uh, rate, my, my apologies, for population 16 and over. Um, so Williamson County has really got a good workforce going. Median hourly wage. Uh, this was as, as of 2019. Very One thing that's very interesting, and I want to point this out because I love data, I'm a data geek, um, is that actually during the height of COVID, when a lot of people were losing their job, the median average earnings went up. And you're like, how could it go up? People are being are, are losing their employment. Unfortunately, the people that lost that employment was some of our frontline workers, uh, retail, hospitality, uh, food service, all kinds of stuff. Therefore, the people that were working, which is where they come from median, where they get the hourly wage, was the higher income people. Um, and because I was sitting there going, income went up, how did it go up? So that's unemployment really will deal with the median hourly wage. That's how come, in my opinion, it's always best to look at it at a yearly 
and not a monthly or quarterly. And this that you're glancing at is of 2019. Uh, 2020 yearly is not out yet. All right. Poverty rate, um, the lowest poverty rate in our nine county area, 6.7. This pretty much so does not change drastically. Um, it's, it, it stays pretty, pretty static. Um, the, uh, each, we can break it down by zip code to show how poverty levels in certain zip codes, um, but overall Williamson County is at 6.7. And I can break it down by city as well. Um, educational payment, this, don't let that mislead you. This is actually if the, underneath it is people without a high school, without a minimum of a high school diploma, 6.1%, um, uh, lowest in the rural capital area um that we have a lot of uh, well-educated people here at least i have, have a high school diploma okay retirement exposure this is the work the population greater than the age of 55 i'm included in that little little category right there so um that um we have a young population here uh not quite as young as uh, it's Hayes County, but you got Texas State University down there. So you got a lot of young people. Um, but if you notice, some of our Western counties have a higher, um, a, what, what is called retirement exposure because some of those communities are retirement communities. Uh, you got Horseshoe Bay out in Lano and Burnett. So a lot of people go to retire. So you'll always see a higher percentage there. Um, and that, that's just demographics. I mean, where people prefer to go retire. Remote workers, this is people that don't work in what we're gonna call a conventional office, like um, Kara, Diane, Paul, myself, we work in a conventional office. Um, you know, that book, telecommute, let's just say, pretty much so all the time. Um, there's a pretty high percentage of people in Williamson County and in Blanco County also, uh, which is fabulous, especially because most people have to have the internet and you would think that the infrastructure out there wasn't that good, but it's good enough that they don't have to travel. Um, and actually, COVID, I'm really curious to see, this is 2018 uh, statistics, what COVID did to these numbers. Um, I, I have a feeling it's going to really increase. Uh, a lot of people found that they actually could work remotely and they did not need offices. That concludes my part very quick. Like I said, I do talk fast. I'm gonna go back to Dr. Ryan. Um, I believe I am. <laughs> You're getting it, Kara. You're getting it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> so, so we are, so as part of our plan, I know we mentioned it and I mentioned it in goal one, and I really want to open this up to, to discussion and questions um, with the knowledge that we're going to have continued discussions and questions in the first meeting where we'll be able to go a lot more into depth. But um, these, the, the Workforce Matters Coalitions are about helping us to coordinate our communication um, in each of our regions uh, around these bigger visionary ideas um, with the thoughts that we can all work together to create incremental steps on how we can approach these, these ideas successfully as, as teams and as a community. Um, so we are building out our Williamson County Workforce Coalition. Um, it will be specific to Williamson County with the idea that we'll be including partners representing um, people uh, or stakeholders representing different types of organizations throughout the counties uh, or throughout the county. And we'll be able to discuss where we are and share feedback about where we're going um, in each of these key areas. And with that in mind, we'll also be able to take the information that we get from this and feed this into a regional Workforce Matters Coalition that will be representative of the nine county area that we support. And the intent of that is to, again, help our regional leaders um, determine how we can leverage resources in, even, in an even greater way um, and continue to respond to workforce needs and the needs of job seekers and create this ecosystem 
that makes um, the uh, work opportunities greater for all of our job seekers in the, in the region. Um, and I really want to encourage any questions or thoughts. I, I, I'll, I'll poke at Terry, because I know you've got a, probably the most thoughts on this, and, I, and we always love your feedback. Um, I know Camille, you're, you're another one of our great partners in this, in these discussions. So if there's any feedback or questions, we'd love to, to include them as part of this. Um, I think that the deal in Williamson County is we are an expensive county to live in. And, and if you, th so that means we're going to have a higher commuter traffic load for the low income um, workers to get here and fill jobs. And that the, the big issue is affordable housing. And yes, we have put in some workforce housing apartment units. There's at least four and maybe more in this area, but, but the need is so sky high. You know, we, there's not enough incentive to, you know, to do anything. And of course now even lumber is costing a fortune. So building supplies are limited. So you're, you're kind of stuck. We are a county with no emergency housing, no temporary housing, and, and limited workforce housing. And, and that makes it really hard because you've got to have this big foundation of workers up to the highly skilled workers who right now that, that COVID has shown or can mostly work from home. So, so some of that traffic is down. Um, but, um, you know, we, we have this need to draw in more industry, yet when they, the first thing they ask is, where will, where will my workers live? And I don't have an answer to that. We have our, our report from Alvin Lankford, our uh, chief appraiser for Williamson County, you know, said this is a market he's never seen before. And every single house, every single lot that gets platted get sold before a house is even there. And even developers, when you say, I want this model house built here, won't give you a price now until it's time to close. Now that should scare us all. It's a crazy time. It's a very crazy time. It is. And these are issues that we keep seeing too. And, and it's hard for us to support our companies if we if we don't because we have to describe where that labor shed can come from. So thank you for highlighting all of that. Does anyone else want to add any guests? Oh, no, uh, this is Camille Clay and I work in uh, CTE, uh, public school education. Um, and so I'm just really excited because I feel like there have been some changes that uh, have come about through our Perkins grant and through the Texas Education Agency and how they are um, really looking closely at labor market data and they are encouraging all of the districts to do the same as well. So I feel like there is a great opportunity for improvement and partnership in the alignment that you were talking about and the the labor market information, the data, where the jobs are, all of those things are incredibly important to us. And I know um, we actually had someone from TEA on the call uh, when we first started, but unfortunately she did have to jump off, but because uh, I know they're interested in what we're doing and how they can support our efforts as well when it comes to our programs of study. So just really excited uh, to be part of the opportunity and feel like there is um, a lot of ways that we can help uh, each other. Absolutely. And, and I agree with you, Camille. It's such a great time. I think we have a unique opportunity in general. We're seeing a lot more opportunities to, to work together, collaborate, and align, align our work. And I, I, can't, I can't agree with you enough. And we really look forward to doing whatever we can to support, to support your school district and help with the programs of studies initiatives, because we know how, how important that is to our workforce ecosystem. Um, anyone else? I know, I, cause I know these are big, it feels big. These, our vision is big for enhancing the workforce system. Um, but we do want to take us in small steps. 
and identify um, opportunities for us to work together in ways that where, where Williamson County is at and with the resources available and see where we can really work together to leverage and align the work that we're doing. Um, so with that in mind, does anyone have any last thoughts or questions? Kara, th gonna, this is... I was gonna comment. I was just gonna say that, you know, I think the opportunity is, is that we, you know, as we roll this out amongst nine different counties, that certainly there's gonna be best practices that we can put in place in all counties, not just Williamson County, right? So as, as we identify the challenges here and the opportunities here, you know, Hayes County may see something else that we didn't think about and, and vice versa. So uh, the fact that, um, you know, I, I applaud the workforce for taking this lead and kind of connecting the dots because again, each county is unique enough that it needs to be looked at individually, but um, just connecting the dots within the community of all the different uh, players at the table is, is something, you know, it's not a, it's not a quick and easy undertaking. It's, it's, it's been a long and, and, and uh, and, and, and you know, time frame to, to get to this point. But, but now that we're here, now that the plan is there, certainly you know, the, the, the next part is the action and rolling it out and getting that feedback. But um, you know, it's, it's a big undertaking and I, and I appreciate the uh, workforce for taking the lead on that. So, so thank you very much for all your time and effort. And thank you, Renee, for your leadership and support. Um, as a board member, we really, we couldn't be where we are without you. So uh, we, we genuinely appreciate it. Hector, did you have any last, did you have anything that you wanted to add? No, I, I just wanted to ask Kara if, if you had a feel for where, uh, where, where, where the uh, jobs are right now in, Will, in Williamson County, what areas are struggling the most to find skilled people and, and where is uh, the, the most opportunities for education to come in and help out in those areas? I mean, those are great questions. And I think we're seeing the greatest demand right now. And Eugene can can probably maybe speak to this a little bit more because he's, he's uh, spent probably a little bit more time in the data recently. Um, but uh, I would say the skilled trades and manufacturing are two of our greatest support areas. And of course, we want to continue to build out that IT and healthcare um, pathways to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community. Um, and we want to work with all of those employers a little bit more directly, like we've said, to, to make sure that we're doing this appropriately and in line with their needs. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, just, just to answer one question you did ask, Hector, and I, I think we're seeing it everywhere and on the news, especially the, the not necessarily skilled trades or education, but the hardest industry right now that, that is begging, begging, begging is retail, hospitality, um, fast food. I mean, it, it, it's, 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 it's pretty bad. They, they are begging for people. Kara and Paul, I wanted to give you an opportunity to answer a question that came through the Q&A. So uh, the attendee asks, can you give us an idea of the plan moving forward? Are we gonna break into focus groups? How frequently will we, will we be meeting and how are updates going to be provided? I'll, I'll answer that if that's, if that's okay. Um, so the, the plan going forward is, is, is we're working to form a coalition of people from Williamson County, uh, would include private business, our, our chambers, EDCs, education, elected officials, um, community-based organizations to help, to help direct these efforts. And, and then as we, as we identify the specific objectives we, we, we as a coalition wanna work on, we will then determine, do we need to break down into different subcommittees or, or, or task, uh, task forces or work groups, whatever we wanna call, call those groups. Um, but we'll, once we identify the specific objectives, we'll identify what resources are needed to try to achieve that um, and move forward in, in that manner. I think that's all we have for now. And, and of okay. course, we'll be sharing that information with the, with the regional coalition to make sure that that's also reported on. And of course, we'll be open to sharing any information we have with, with whomever asks. <laughs> you know, um, just just an observation. I heard a lot, a lot of questions about labor market information 
uh, where are the open jobs, that, that, those kind of things. A lot of that information is available on our website um, and we will work to try to make that a little easier for, um, for you to dig that out. Um, I know Brian is pretty diligent about including links to information like that in our, in our newsletters that we send out periodically. Um, we will make sure we get something out regarding that type of information and, and, uh, and ways for you to access that information when you need it. Um, Thanks, Paul. So, so another question has come through the Q&A um, and it's asking about how transportation will be addressed, especially in the western sections of Williamson County, such as Liberty Hill. So when, when we included these big infrastructure um, components in this plan as things we wanted to, to look at, um, we're really looking at getting this coalition that I just talked about connected to um, things that are already ongoing in Williamson County that would address things like transportation, uh, affordable housing, um, broadband, et cetera. We don't, we're, we're certainly not advocating that we, uh, you know, add another lane to 35 and we get out there and, and do that ourselves. Um, but we, we want to get connected to the things that are already ongoing and try to bring a workforce perspective to, to those issues so that, so that workforce is represented and, and the needs of the workforce um, get get put on the table and, and addressed while while these other efforts are ongoing. Were there any I'm other questions? Oh, sorry. I was just saying, I'm not hearing any other questions and I got some people I would specifically like to thank for being on this, uh, at this meeting today. So our, uh, if we do have any other questions, we can certainly address those, but I want to make sure we 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 thank some people for being here. Um, our efforts are directed by a 28-person volunteer workforce board, over half of which is comprised of people from private business who take time away from their their day jobs to help guide and direct the efforts uh, that we do at, at, at on the workforce board. Um, so the folks that are here today re um, representing the board: um, Camille Clay, who we heard from; Sandra Moya; Frank Leonardis; uh, Dr. Hector Aguilar. Uh, Jennifer Tucker, Marco Cruz, Margaret Lindsay, Renee Flores, Scott Staten, and Tracy Jackson were all, you know, took time away from what they were doing to, to join us for this meeting today. So thank you guys for being here. Um, I also like to thank Commissioner Cook from Williamson County for being here today. She's been a strong workforce advocate over the years, and we appreciate her involvement in what we're trying to accomplish. I uh, saw Garrett Groves from ACC was here with us today. Um, a lot of a lot of representatives from our chambers of commerce and economic development. Um, I think we had a, a very well-rounded group, and, and I don't want to forget our our workforce contractor Mike Crane from Equus, and our, our child care contractor Sandy Anderson from Baker Ripley were were here with us today. So thank you guys for being here. Um, we we think this is important. You'll be hearing more from us soon about um, work that we will do under this coalition as we get that group put together um, and and have that initial meeting. We'll get that information out to everyone. Thank you guys. Uh, before we go, um, Frank, would you like to say a few words? Just again, uh, thank everybody for your participation in this. We uh, certainly look forward to the um, Workforce Matters Coalition being formed and your participation and input on that as well. Um, thanks for everybody's time today. Everybody, I know everybody is very busy. Um, certainly appreciate you taking your time out to join us. Um, for this event and helping us um, not only develop, but uh, roll out this plan. So thank you all. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Bye.